What is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745, and welcome to episode 4 of Team Spotlight. This episode is brought to you in part by Agent Seraph1, so let's hear it for him. Yeah! Woo, yeah! And the name of the team that we're going to spotlight is, the Thunder Buddies. I think many of us thought of them as the Hammer Bros, but Thunder Buddies just seems a little bit more funny to me. And they'll have your opponent singing that song. Now things are going to be just a little bit different for this episode. It feels like there's a lot of stuff to get in for this one. For one, there's many different items you can make your agent use. Two, the team can actually perform differently from match to match. So instead of showing our PvE villain archive fight, we're going to have three different matches and slightly different setups for each. I will also show you the custom ISO we use for Beta Ray and Thor but we'll take a look at that later in this video. Now our first priority with the Thunder Buddies is to apply Static Charge to the enemy team. You definitely want to get that Chain Lightning going. And then when you're lucky enough to get the Thunder Rolls, then the enemy team is in for some serious trouble. This doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's devastating. So that's one way this team can take down the enemy in no time flat. The other ways of course would be just Static Charge and the fact that they're extremely powerful attackers. Now with the Mighty Thor and our Agent, we kind of have a redundancy in our setup, but I'm doing that for a reason. It actually may not even make it to my Agent's turn, but I'm using the Roaring Thunder. For anyone looking to make this team but you don't have access to Storm Herald, aka the Mighty Thor's team passive, then that is another option. Since it's a buff just by putting your Agent in a Tactician uniform with the Quick E ISO, is going to make it a quick action. But before we go on with that, let's see if Thor can indeed finish the enemy team. If not, we'll use that item on our agent's turn. As you can see, Thor is pretty decked out as far as buffs go, but we still may not be able to do enough damage. He does however provide Storm Herald. And okay, our Summon Thunder comes up just short, but a very solid hit. So with my agent, we have the Roaring Thunder, which also applies Storm Herald, chance for a follow-up lightning strike when attacking with or being attacked by single target attacks. This causes and triggers static charge. Plus, we would also get strengthened. So everything that the Mighty Thor is giving us right now. And we're just going to use the Thunder Strike and finish this first match. Alright, so after this finish, we're going to switch to my more normal setup. And I'll also discuss a few other options. One option that we're not even going to use today is the Spark Plugger. We had the Magnetic Pulse Cannon as well, but we really didn't use that weapon either. One of the main weapons that I like to use with this team is actually the Staff of Storms. So we're going to switch to that and also the Cosmic Cardinal, or sometimes I like to use the Rectifier. That will at least work out with Thor's level 9 and I believe Beta Ray's level 6. As for the Mighty Thor's costume, we're using a Bruiser, and first he has Thunder God. Inspire Bravery causes static charge on all enemies. Some of these effects that you're seeing come from their A-ISOs, which I will show you that setup after this next match. But basically for this costume, God of Thunder states, Might can stack up to three times, and Storm Herald is granted to the party. So that's mainly why we're using him in this setup. It's a pretty awesome costume. However, I still prefer the other costumes of Thor in just about any other setup that doesn't involve static charge. Anyways though, on our agent we have the Bruiser Safeguard Suit and quite a few other effects going on there, mainly the Elite E-ISO, as well as Thunder Watch. We'll get to that once we look at the Thunderstrike. Then next up is Beta Ray Bill. Of course he is a bruiser and a blaster. He can protect so we gave him big and fast, which will work out from time to time. Then his main thing is the Thunder Rolls. After attacking, chance for a follow up lightning strike that causes static charge. And this comes courtesy of his rumbling E-ISO. That can be found in his chapter 9 heroic battle by the way. Then the Staff of Storms is a multi-function weapon, and we're mainly concerned with his first function, the Terrifying Storm. 
It's an AoE attack that triggers static charge when used. It causes static charge, intimidated and opportunist. So yeah, it's a very solid item for this team. It also has another function, but we don't use that too often. That's the Mist Shroud. Then moving on to our next staple in this setup, it's going to be the Thunder Strike. The reason we use that is because we don't have to actually use it in combat. Instead, we rely on the chance to counterattack electricity attacks, or more importantly, enemies with static charge. The magnetic pulse cannon we're actually removing for this fight, but it is another option. It's a stealthy AoE attack. So one change could be for the rectifier like I said earlier. Unfortunately, not all of their attacks are energy based, but it is a quick action that causes energy feedback on the enemy, causes energy attacks to gain guaranteed hit and increased chance of crits. Plus our teammates will heal after they perform their energy attack. After that, we're going to be using the Lantern of Doom basically as the Mystic, so you could use that instead. And finally, we have the Synthetic Cube. Now in actuality, for this next fight, we actually did a really fast switch and put in the Cosmic Cardinal. I don't know why, I just wanted to try it out, even though we're mainly going to use AoE attacks. And that's why in the final match, we'll switch back to the Rectifier. But in this one, Beta Ray once again gets to go first. And the enemy agent is a tactician. In this case, I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to try to get that thunder rolling. The other cool thing about him is we can use short fuse or primed and ready. Either way, Beta Ray, I say the nay. And it does decent damage and causes chain lightning. So static charge damage. Plus we did place radiation exposure on the enemy team. The tactician does get an extra turn and with that he hits with the mandible. However he'll take absorb energy and we're going to counter with the thunder strike. This once again will cause static charge to proc on the entire enemy team. So not too bad and the enemy agents almost already knocked out. Following Null's turn. He's going to hit us with Fatal Fist, but we do get Absorb Energy, and we're going to hit him with the Thunder Strike as well. This hits for 20,000 damage, and KOs him. With our actual turn, we're going to use the Staff of Storms, which should finish off the enemy agent, and we'll just have to see how much HP Iron Fist has left. This storm, by the way, is kind of a cool thing as well. Yes, there is a slight delay. But it's something unique, and I actually like it. At the end of it, Iron Fist is down to 3700 HP. Then Absorb Energy almost finishes him. To be honest though, I'm actually happy that Thor is going to get to attack. Because let's see this amazing damage from his hammer throw. It's going to do right around 110,000 damage. That's going to knock out anyone in the game twice over. But before we get to this final match, we are going to look at their custom ISO build. So their A ISO and E ISO. If you're wondering about his ISO 8 build, I believe it's all forceful and too stalwart. But we're using his dynamic empowered ISO 8. That's what gives him Thunder God. Next we're using powerful on his level 1. We want as much damage as we can get. Shocking on his level 2. So adds electricity and static charge. Worthy on his level 6. So it grants 2 stacks of might. And finally on his level 9. We have the bursting. So that's our mighty Thor build. Now we'll take a brief look at Beta Ray Bill as well. First of all he has the same exact ISO 8 setup. Then he has the rumbling E ISO. This is an incredible E-ISO. It doesn't always proc though. Next we have Vengeful. And he can get big and fast from time to time. We put Knocking on his level 1, Aiming on his level 2, Ionizing on his level 6, and Powerful on his level 9. 
Not an extremely unique A-ISO setup, but it does the job. And maybe he'll get some custom ones in the future. Then the only difference with our agent setup for this one is we're using the rectifier, which may or may not even come into play. Then the final team we're facing is Heimdall and Red Hulk. Now unfortunately the enemy team has two tacticians. And this is kind of crazy because we haven't faced many tacticians at all this entire season. But we bring in a blaster and we face a bunch. Funny how that seems to happen. But with our agent, we do begin with the rectifier. And then we can use the Staff of Storms. However, they have a bunch of buffs, so... Instead, we're going to remove them with the Blackest Void. That's definitely our safest move for now. Then next, the enemy is going to use the Dimensional Rift. The Dimensional Rift, I guess is a better pronunciation. And that's totally fine with us. Then comes Beta Ray's turn. And we have a serious, serious problem. I just don't think we can give them both extra turns, so... Instead, we'll use his level 9 on Heimdall. When you can't use exactly what you want to, go for the most damage. Unfortunately, we're halted, so that was ruined. At least Red Hulk doesn't use his Gamma Bomb yet. And with Thor, we can use Inspire Bravery, Short Fuse, and our level 9. This attack does count as an energy hit, so it's going to benefit from the Rectifier. And as you can see, it even heals Thor for a little bit of health. More importantly, it decimates the enemy team, and causes Static Charge. Then the enemy Heimdall hits his own agent. And now with my agent, we can use the Staff of Storms. This may very well end the match. Their agent's most likely going to live though. But from the initial hit, we take out Red Hulk, and the Chain Lightning gets Heimdall so close to the end. The agent once again uses that really useless part of the Small Hadron Collider, and because of that, he takes Absorb Energy as well as a Thunderstrike hit that also triggers Static Charge and ends the match. So yeah, that item may be too complicated for the enemy AI to use. But that's going to be it for our look at the Thunder Buddies, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Our rating's getting up there, so we should be fine as far as getting Misty Knight. Once I do, I'll definitely have a video on her, and I wish you all the best of luck in PvP as well. Lastly, I want to thank you all for watching, and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck, and take care.